Well, we are celebrating uh, today some uh, young men who um, have decided to follow Jesus and serve him. Got a couple of other fellows who are also wanting to give testimony to that. I'll introduce these uh, gentle giants to you in a moment or two, but I want to talk to you about uh, what they are about to do. It's called baptism. It's a command of Jesus. Matter of fact, everybody who in the New Testament became a follower of Jesus was baptized, maybe with the exception of the thief and the cross who really didn't have an opportunity. But uh, being obedient to Christ means following him in the waters of baptism. Baptism is a uh, public profession. It's a uh, profession of an inward possession. It is really saying, I have trusted Christ as my Savior, and I want people to know that. I want it to be public. Uh, baptism is brought over into English. It's really a Greek word. The New Testament was written in Greek, and uh, the uh, Greek word baptizo means to immerse, uh, to put under. Matter of fact, if you've done any uh, tie-dyeing, uh, that's the same word that would be used to put it under. Um, because of the symbolism, the symbol is that a person is um, dying to their old life, they're being buried, and they're being raised to walk in the newness of life. So it is a picture of what a person experiences when they become a Christian. They die to their old life, they identify with Jesus Christ, and they're raised to walk in newness uh, of life. I want to uh, introduce you uh, to uh, these uh, two uh, young men uh, who I've known um, all their life, had the privilege of uh, dedicating them uh, a few years ago. Matter of fact, I guess almost, almost 16 years ago. Um, Ryan McGilvery and Brandon uh, McGilvery. I say um, gentle uh, giants, uh, they weren't always gentle. Uh, a little while ago, I gave them a picture, uh, a beautiful picture of uh, them with my granddaughter in a children's choir. And there were Brandon and Ryan standing angelically uh, part of that choir. I knew that wasn't the way it was at home. As a matter of fact, what was happening at home was legendary. Um, uh, Todd and Rebecca would report each week about the challenge of raising uh, these two boys. Don't feel badly for Rebecca. She should have known she married Todd. <laughs> and uh, Todd's mother is here, can tell you about the other brothers as well. But. Um, uh, I have seen these uh, boys uh, grow, and as a matter of fact, it was our privilege. Uh, Pastor Bob, uh, when uh, they entered into youth, had a program where we would pray uh, regularly for an individual out of that youth group. And Eudora and I actually uh, were given Brandon, and well, because we got Brandon, we also chose to take uh, Ryan. And so since uh, grade 7, now into grade 10, uh, we... Uh, Uh, have uh, prayed uh, regularly for these young men. So uh, it is a personal uh, privilege uh, for me to be involved in their uh, baptism today. In the third book of John, um, John says, uh, there's no greater joy than to see um, children, followers, young people, uh, following in the ways uh, of the Lord, and that is my privilege uh, today. I'm um, going to uh, baptize them individually. Um, Ryan is going to go first. He's the elder. And, um, and then I'm asking Brandon um, to help, and then Ryan to help with, uh, um, uh, with Brandon. Um, for two reasons. One, because I'm not sure I can lift these guys out of the water. 
And also, I want it to be symbolic. Baptism is symbolic. I want it to be symbolic. They may have been a help to each other in getting them into trouble years ago. I want them to symbolically indicate uh, that for the rest of their life, uh, they will be desirous of helping one another grow to the next step in serving God and growing in a relationship uh, with uh, Jesus. So um, Ryan is going to give his uh, testimony first of all. Ryan? Uh, hi there. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ryan McDilvery, and I'm 15 years old, turning 16 in a couple of days. I was born and raised in a Christian family and have attended Wesley Heights Baptist Church with my parents all my life. When I was about six or seven years old, I accepted Jesus into my heart because I wanted to be a Christian like my parents, but I was not too sure what that meant at the age. I just knew I wanted to go to heaven. Shortly after accepting Jesus into my heart, when I was in grade one, I broke my arm on some mighty bars at the park. I ended up needing surgery because it was a bad break and I had to be taken to Sick Kids Hospital. This was the first time I felt God personally in my life. I could see him working through other people for me. My aunt came all the way home to get all my favorite stuffed animals to bring them to me. My surgery was delayed for 24 hours until the head of surgery was on duty and I knew many people were praying for me. My love for adventure and risk taking continued and around age 10, I had another major injury. I got a concussion while tobogganing. It took a while for the damage from this injury to show up, but when it did, the part of my brain that got injured caused me to struggle with anxiety. The most powerful thing that helped me get through my anxiety was writing out scripture verses and posting them all around my bed so I could read them when I was anxious. The verse that stuck out to me, stuck out to me the most was Philippians 4 verses 6 to 9 that says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I still use these verses to get me through tough times even now. But during the last five years of my life, I have struggled to make my relationship with God my own and have not really made time for him. And then COVID hit. During the first year, I started to feel a loss of connection with people because of the lockdowns. And I was confused and questioning what God's purpose for it was. I knew I still had a strong connection with my two best friends, Nathan Christman and my cousin William. However, during this time, God was also working behind the scenes to provide another amazing group of friends. They introduced me and Brandon to a weekly worship night called The River and several Bible studies with other Christian kids that have further challenged and grown my faith. Then a couple of months ago, I attended a men's Bible conference with my brother and dad. One of, the, one of the pastors that we met there was talking about end times and being ready if Jesus was to come again soon. What he said that really stood out to me and really made me wonder if I'm ready to meet God right now or if there's more that I need to do. After that conference, the topic of baptism was brought up multiple times in conversations with my friends at school and my family during dinner. These conversations have helped me realize the next step of obedience from his baptism. I know my spiritual walk is a work in progress, and there are lots I still struggle with, but I know the direction I'm heading. I'm excited to see what God has planned for me. God is continuing to provide opportunities for me to grow in my leadership and faith, and I know he's drawing me closer to, closer to him. I've really been impacted by the scripture, John 10, verses 27 to 29, which says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I'm standing here today to say I want to spend the rest of my life learning to hear my shepherd's voice. Ryan, have you uh, trusted Christ as your own personal Savior? Yes. And is it your intention to live for Him for the rest of your life? Yes. Then in obedience to the command of Christ, and because you have requested it, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
once I wipe my face off from Ryan's, uh, or from Ryan's, uh, do you get wet too? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brandon is going to give his uh, testimony. Mm. Hi, my name is Brandon, and I've had the privilege of being raised in a Christian home, and I've attended Westney Heights my whole life. Right off the bat, one of the verses that really impacts me is Psalm 139, 13 to 16, where it declares, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body, and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the darkness of the womb. You saw me before I was born, and every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. My journey all started even before I was conceived, because God already planned the time of birth, the family I'd be born into, and the fact that I would share my life with my twin brother. I know my parents struggle to have children, and this verse tells me that God had a specific time planned for me to be born and has his hand on my life. When I was around six or seven years old, that was the first time I accepted Jesus Christ into my heart because I wanted to go to heaven and wanted to be ready if he came back, and I wasn't sure what the whole Christian thing meant or what it meant to follow the Lord. I remember when I was young, and I would get angry or frustrated with Ryan, and I would solve that anger in a sinful way. My mom. And my mom would ask me why I did it. Then I would feel guilty, and my mom would help me understand it was that is because I was a sinner. Then, when I was around 11 years old, I accepted him into my heart again, but with a better and clearer understanding of what having a personal relationship with the Lord was all about. One night, I felt the Lord was calling me to look up memory verses that I would need for different trials in my life. I looked up around 50 memory verses and put them into a battle plan, which was the tools my parents gave me. And as I was writing out these verses, one of the ones that stood out to me the most was James 1, 19 to 20, which says, Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. This verse made me realize that the world didn't have answers on how to deal with my anger, what God's word did, and that he would help me deal with my anger in a more godly way. After this, at around 13 or so, I wanted to start building a better connection with the Lord rather than depending on my parents to do devotionals with me and looking at those memory verses occasionally. But as time went on, I struggled to make time to do devotionals and maintain time for God when high school hit. During my first year of high school during COVID, I felt, over, I felt overwhelmed with online school and the lack of connections with friends and youth. I also I was so focused on getting my work done that I wasn't setting aside time to get a personal devotional with the Lord or build a personal relationship with Him. But throughout COVID, God is changing me to become a different person and not just a fan of Christ, but a follower of Christ. He's led me to seek Him more, and one of the best memories I have about God is at the cottage when we experience beautiful sunsets, seeing the stars and constellations, and his creation all around. Then, in early in 2022, I decided to attend a men's Bibles conference with my brother and dad, and that conference was based on the idea of, are you ready? It encouraged me to take further steps in my walk with Christ and not to be a lukewarm Christian. They gave a metaphor of a tree and how people only see the fruit of the tree, but the roots determine what the fruit looks like. They only have one life and you have to grow your roots in Jesus. After hearing the me that message of, in the conference and being ready for Christ's return, it made me realize that baptism was the next step for me. God has provided for me in ways I never would have thought possible. One of those ways was being introduced to a new group of Christian friends that have introduced me to a praise and worship gathering called The River, and it allows me to experience God in ways I've never had before. The message there has really spoken to me and reminded me not to focus on the what in life, such as hope, worry, hopelessness, affirmation, or trials that distract you from the who, which is God, and to worship Him only. The worship experience at the river has caused me to want to grow closer to Him and desire His plans for my life. I know my Christian walk won't be perfect and that Satan has a plan for my life as well, but God is the Alpha and Omega and has the final say in my life. He's the beginning and the end, and I want to, do, I want to follow him in all that he has for me. Brandon, have you trusted Christ as your own personal Savior? I have. 
And is it your intention to live for him the rest of your life? Yes. Then in obedience to the command of Christ, because you have requested it, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that we have done as the Lord hath commanded, and yet there is uh, room. Heidi, I think we are ready to uh, worship uh, the Lord. If we aren't ready now, we never will be. Come and lead us. <laughs> <laughs> 